Hi, my name is Mike Rutkowski. I'm 68 years old. I live in Oakland, Maryland, near Deep Creek Lake. And uh, the Lord has instructed me to do another video, so I'm back once again. Uh, didn't really expect to do another video so quickly, but uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, there's this guy out there that's been doing quite a bit of videos on me, you know, trying to say that what I'm relating is wrong. And, uh, you know, God basically told me you need to go out and, you know, expose this guy and put him in his place and show people who he truly is. So guess what? That's what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, if you're somebody that you believe that what I'm relating is wrong, I can tell you right now, God is going to have me come after you with uh, six guns blazing. And I am just, I'm going to show how you have no idea what you're talking about, how your soul belongs to the devil. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, realize as much as God said, he said in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So, uh, I'm going to show this guy, his name is David Houghton. I guess that's how you say it. It was H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N. He's got a channel out there called the No Nonsense, uh, what was it? No, oh, no Nonsense Christian. Okay, what it actually should be called is pure nonsense from the devil because the guy has no idea what he's even talking about and I'm going to prove as much. And uh, yeah. Let me, you know, of course, I didn't know much about this guy, so I had to watch some of his videos. Let me just say this. I, I literally got a headache listening to this guy because in some of his videos, he, uh, I, I told my brothers and sisters in Christ, I was like, he sounded like Chip and Dale, uh, the chipmunks from Walt Disney. Uh, in some videos, he's talking so fast that he reminded me of like somebody taking a 45 uh record from years ago and then playing it at the 78 rpm because it was just nothing like did it you know and um the guy thinks he's uh so smart like i, I saw areas where he called me like a narcissist and uh like i'm full of pride and all this other kind of stuff well basically this guy was describing himself i mean he's he's nothing i mean if you look at him he's nothing but basically a lazy know-it-all that thinks he knows everything. He's out there calling people names and everything else left and right, you know, and uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna show you just how this guy hasn't a clue what the word of God is relating, that he's just another one. Realize this, you have these, what they call, well, he calls himself, I think it's salvation by grace uh, person or, you know, whether you want to call it once saved, always saved, saved by grace, that type of thing. All of these people, they're basically looking for an easy way out. This guy, even same thing, he's looking for an easy way out. As a matter of fact, in some of his videos, I saw where he says, uh, I'm here, uh, how did he put it? Uh, uh, the simple salvation. Well, <laughs> You listen to him, it, it really should say that, I think, oh, it was the simple way to your salvation. Uh, no, it's actually the simple way to your damnation if you listen to this guy, because he has no idea what he is even talking about. So, you know, I listened to one of his videos that he like did on me, and I'm going to be going over that and everything else. But one of his big things he talks about is uh, he's real big on saying there's no scripture that ever says repent of your sins now because i've said like repent of your sins and some that you need to repent of your sins and things like that that's another thing he's he's he does he, he's almost i guess you could say he's almost like a politician where you'll if you look at some of his videos he's like cutting and splicing things from various different videos and then putting them together so he's taking, you know, snips of various comments, and then he's adding other things to create his, you know, delusional narrative that he's trying to get you to believe. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you how this guy, 
which you have to realize with all these uh, saved by grace people and everything else, uh, what they believe is that, you know, you know, it is that all you got to do is say you believe in Jesus and, and you're now saved. Like this guy, he's got a video out there, something, uh, I don't know what it was called, but it was something like 10 reasons you're a moron if you believe that uh, you have to repent of your sins, something like that. Well, let me, let me tell you this. This guy's got to be the biggest moron on the face of the earth, okay? Uh, because if, if you look up the word repent, the word repent, and as scripture will tell you, it's to turn from sin and to turn from God. So, of course, if you are going to repent, it means to repent of your sins, to confess your sins to God, to stop sinning. And I'm going to give you the scriptures that back all this up in just a little bit. But uh, the reason the Bible doesn't say repent of your sins, because basically it would be repeating itself. Because it's repent means, if you're saying repent, it means you're repenting of your sins. So, but to this moron, he believes that repent means, no, it just means turning to God. Why? Because he's looking for an easy way out. That's all. He doesn't want to make the changes and the sacrifices that God is asking us to make. So, um, let's see. Uh, you know, he, here's another thing. If, if all we had to do was believe in Jesus in order to be saved, then why is God in the old covenant? Why is Jesus? Why are the apostles all telling us we need to turn from sin and turn to God? Why are they all sitting there saying you need to repent? So why don't they just say all you need to do is believe and you'll be saved? Well, <laughs> this is where, you know, these saved by grace people and everything else, these once saved, always saved people, they are just wicked souls. They all believe that it's impossible to stop sinning. And the reason they believe this, of course, is because they don't possess God's Holy Spirit. The only spirit that's guiding their life is the devil. They belong to the devil. They know nothing of God. And they're twisting the scripture verses in order to fit their delusional narrative. So, you know, uh, I'm going to go, let's see where we want to get here. I want to... Uh, Here's, this is in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I'm going to start towards the beginning. So God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, what he's telling you is, and I'm going to read the scriptures too, is that God is telling us, look, we're all born in sin. We're all born evil and wicked. You know, this is another thing these people like to do. This guy, for example, too, I, I think he calls me a sinless perfectionist. I love how these idiots come up with these weird names and everything else and so forth there. Uh, you know, anything to justify, I guess you could say their delusions in that regard and everything, okay? So when I say to people, you know, look, I no longer sin, uh, these, I guess you could say nut cases, all they hear is, uh, man, well, he's saying he, he's never sinned. No, I never said that. I was a sinner just like everybody else. But I did something that the majority in this world had never done. I turned to God with all my heart. I searched him out with all my heart. I went looking for the truth with all my heart. I, I started reading the Bible. I started believing the Bible. I started acting on the Bible. And I went after God and I prayed to God. And I was like, Lord, you got to show me your truth. You got to, you know, because I'm listening to these preachers out there I'm, I'm, and I'm seeing how everybody's contradicting themselves left and right. And I'm Lord, Lord, this can't be right. If there's only one truth, what's the real truth? You got to tell me. I went looking. I, I remember going back then. I'm like, Lord, what's it mean to possess your Holy Spirit? What's it mean to live by your Spirit? You know, to be filled with your Spirit, to live in the power of the Spirit, those kind of things. I don't understand these things. You got to help me. You got to tell me. You got to guide me. Well, this is what happens. And, and if you've listened to some of the testimonies from my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is, they ended up, do, they were at, 
at the same place that I was. And this is how God works. You know, this guy, he made a comment. Uh, I forget what it was, but he said something. It's not like he found some other sanctified disciple, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, I actually did. Uh, I went to God, and then God led me to a book written by Smith Wigglesworth. It was called a Smith Wigglesworth Devotional. Once I started reading that book, that's what led me to understand how to test the spirits in order to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. And that's what so many of you don't understand. You know, you're following false preachers and everything. You're following idiots like this guy that's no nonsense Christian character. And, and you're listening to those lies. So, you know, I went to God and I, yeah, I repented of my sins. I confessed my sins to God. I told him, yeah, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want to live the holy and righteous life that you commanded us all to live. So I told him, what is it, Lord? I need your Holy Spirit. So, of course, God brought his Holy Spirit into my life. He then, Jesus, started teaching me. In other words, I got my wisdom from no mortal man. I got it directly from God. And in other words, God was teaching me. See, a lot of you are out there claiming, oh, I'm a born-again Christian. No, you're not. You don't even know what it means to be a Christian. You don't even know what it means to born, be born again. What has changed in your life? Do you even know what the scriptures say about those that are born of God? That's the problem with the majority of people. You have no idea what the word of God is relating, just like this no-nonsense Christian. This guy is so delusional, it's not even funny. But what you got to understand is these saved by grace characters, they don't, you know, they'll, they'll sit there, oh, I'll, Jesus did it all. All I got to do is say, I believe in Jesus and now I'm saved. Well, guess what? Even the demons believe in Jesus. So it, as Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And do you know what a lot of these uh, saved by grace characters believe? Well, they basically believe that if you're following any of the old covenant commands, then that means you're doing works, that you're trying to earn your way into salvation. And that just shows you just how clueless these people are. Because, you know, when Jesus said, if you love me, you'll follow my commands. Well, guess what? In case they're missing it, Jesus was God in the flesh. And basically, Jesus was saying, look, I'm God. If you follow me, you're gonna, if, you, if you really believe me, you're going to follow my commands. Now, what so many people are missing and that they don't understand is that in the Old Covenant, there was commands on how you were to, you know, obey God and follow God. There was commands on how you needed to worship God. There was commands in order to uh, make atonement for our sins, for, for, for forgiveness of sins. And there were commands that were, I guess you could say, to separate the Israelites from the other nations. Now, guess, do all those commands still apply today? No, they do not. But guess what? Some of them do. And the only way, you know, you know if you went to the internet and you searched the internet for like if you put in something like do we still does a christian still have to follow like the old covenant uh you know commands or laws or whatever and you're going to find that people are all over the place on this you're you're, you're going to see there's people saying no we don't you're going to see where people saying yes we do you're going to see where some people say yes we got to follow some no we don't that type of thing so that just shows you how do you know the truth which one's the truth you know well the only way you're going to get the truth is getting it from God directly. That's why you need to be able to talk to Jesus. You need to be able to hear his voice. Otherwise, you're going to be listening to like this nutcase, you know, uh, lazy, put a plain simple word, slob that uh, you ought to see some of this guy's videos. I mean, this guy's he, he's a real lunatic. I mean, he's way out there. I mean, he's, you know, he thinks he's smart, but he's actually probably one of the stupidest people I've ever come across. He has no idea what he's talking about. As, as I said, he, he can't even understand the definition of repent. You know, that's how clueless this guy actually is. But you need to be able to talk to God in order to find out what's what, what's real, what's the truth. Well, guess what? I did that. I went searching for God with all my heart, and I learned how to talk to him. And that's what I've been relating to people in my videos and everything else. Anyway, we're all born in sin. We're all born wicked. We have to learn to become a child of God. 
Only the righteous are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. The unrighteous are not going to enter the kingdom of God. This guy says, oh, no, I'm always going to sin. Well, guess right. It's because he's unrighteous. He doesn't possess God's Holy Spirit. The guy has no idea he's already condemned. He condemned himself because he's leading, he's filling people's head with lies. He's leading people astray. There is no way on this earth this guy's going to be saved. Now, the saved by grace people, here's what they don't want to tell you and they don't point out. So I'm going to read some scriptures to you here, okay? God commanded us to be holy, that we have to be holy, okay? And in case you don't know the definition of holy, I wrote it down and I want to read it exactly. Holy means spiritually perfect or pure, untainted by evil or sin, sinless, saintly, okay? So God commanded us to be holy, but yet people like this no-nonsense Christian guy are saying, oh, it's impossible. Oh, so God gave us commands that were impossible for us to do, huh? That's basically what people like him are saying. So I want to read some scriptures of what God commanded of us. So this is in Luke 1, 68 to 75. It says, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Notice how he says, holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days. So right there it's telling you that God is expecting us to serve him in holiness and righteousness. He's telling you that the prophets of long ago were holy. So think about this now. These characters are telling you that it's impossible to stop sinning. They're telling you, oh no, we can't do that. Yet, as I say, holy's definition, spiritually perfect or pure, untainted by evil or sin, sinless, saintly. Okay, other scriptures, Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So if you're not living a life, a holy life, where you're no longer sinning, it's saying flat out, you're not going to see God. It's never going to happen. So guess what, David Hodden? You're never going to see God. You are nothing more than a child of the devil. You know, and he likes to point out too, he's like, he's always calling people children of the devil and everything else. That's because you people are children of the devil. You're ignorant souls, you're lying souls who are twisting the word of God to fit your delusional beliefs. So yeah, you're a condemned soul. And guess what? Every person that has listened to your lies and to believe the lies in your videos, guess what? You're going to suffer that much more for all eternity. You're going to answer for every person that you led astray for your lies. You got a heck of a torment uh, facing you, pal. Anyway, I'll go on and even give you more. Romans 8:11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Revelation 22, 14 to 15. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 4.3.8 It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual, immature, mature, sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that, and, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before, 
For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects, rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Leviticus 11.44, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consen consecrate, consecrate yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. By the way, consecrate. What's it mean? To make something holy, sacred, dedicated to, or to be set apart. Leviticus 19.1-2, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So you've got scripture over scripture where God is commanding us to be holy. Now, can we achieve this on our own? No, we cannot. That is why we need his Holy Spirit in order to transform us, to change our heart into a child of God. I even made a script. Here's Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Well, that is what happened with someone like me. I was a sinner just like everybody else. But I now turn to God with all my heart. I went searching for him with all my heart. I confessed my sins. I repented of my sins. I told him, Lord, I no longer want to sin. I want to live your holy and righteous life. I need your Holy Spirit. Teach me what it is that I need to do. Well, that is what happens then. Jesus then enters your life. He then guides you and teaches you how to be holy, how to become a true Christian who lives exactly like Christ lives. Well, all these kids out there that are trying to feed you this nonsense that, oh, we're saved by grace. We can, you know, we can just, as I say, we can, all we got to do is say we believe in Jesus and we're saved. They are filled with other nonsense. They're filled with lies. They condemn their souls. You know, people, I've, as I told you in my last video, somebody's saying that, you know, I'm out there condemning people. No, I'm not. I just possess the wisdom to know how you've condemned yourself. You know, many of you on the internet, that's why God has me doing these videos, to expose all these false preachers on the internet and to show how they're nothing but children of the devil who are going to perish for all eternity. Well, this... David Houghton character, this, as I said, this guy is clueless as he comes. He thinks he's smart. He acts like a know-it-all, but he doesn't know anything. And I'm telling you now, people, run from this guy. He's a pure idiot. He's, he's really, I'm telling you, as stupid as they come. So, again, he says, oh, you know, you know, anybody that says you, we need to repent of our sins is a moron. That's kind of like how he talks. He's like some English, you know, lunatic off the deep end. I want to read you a couple definitions of repent. Okay, this is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It says, repent means to turn from sin and dedicate oneself to the amendment of one's life, to feel regret or contrition, to change one's mind. Oxford's Language Dictionary says, feel or express sincere regret about one's wrongdoing or sin. Cambridge Dictionary has it to say, to be very sorry for something bad that you have done in the past and wish that you had not done it. Then it offers this sentence using repent in a sentence, and it says, he repented, and it has in parentheses, of his sins just before he died. Gee, why does it have he repented of his sins in there? Because that's what repent means, to repent of your sins, to turn from sins. So there's no reason for it to say it in Scripture, because if you really knew the definition of repent, you would know that it means it's telling you to repent, to stop sinning, to confess your sins. So I now, you know, I want to show you what God had commanded us and what so many of you have not done and why you're leading an ignorant and deceived life, why you have sickness in your life and everything else. It's because you're following nutcases like this guy from the No uh, Nonsense Christian channel. And as I said, I don't even know why, he's not a Christian in the least. This guy is so far from being a Christian, it's not even funny. 
Anyway, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who's an unrighteous person? Someone that sins, okay? Then in Levitic Leviticus 5, 5, it says, and it shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Proverbs 28, 13, he who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. What does forsake mean? Abandon, give up, to renounce, to turn away entirely, desert, to quit or leave entirely. Everything's telling you that when you repent, you have to turn from sin. You have to walk away from sin. You go to God, you confess your sin, you tell him, Lord, I'm a sinner, I no longer sin. You asking for his Holy Spirit, he will then give you. But you have to really mean this. You have to believe it. You have to search God out with all your heart. If you're just going about it half, 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 haphazardly, it's never going to happen. You know, you're going to end up like one of these, you know, this David Houghton character and everything else. I'm now going to read you a couple of scriptures about repent. Okay? This is in Luke 13, 155. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower of Shiloham fell and killed them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Okay, Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3.19.20, Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send you the Christ appointed for you. Again, yeah, David moron, we know, moron, that the Bible never says repent of your sins. But see, where most of us know that when you say repent, that means repent of your sins. That's why people like me have to say you need to repent of your sins, because there are many clueless and ignorant souls like yourself that doesn't understand that that's what repent means. You know, you believe like the nonsense that you believe. Oh, I don't, I don't have to stop sinning. It's impossible for me to stop sinning. You know, that kind of nonsense you hear out of this guy's mouth. You know, all I had to do was turn to God. That's the simple gospel way to salvation. No, that's the simple way to condemn your soul for all eternity. And that's exactly what this guy has done. So, again, I'll read Ezekiel 18 to prove this is also for all these people out there that are pushing this once saved always saved narrative where they're saying oh once i say i believe in jesus i can never lose my salvation they're th these people are total nutcases and they don't they have no idea what the word of god is relating this is i said ezekiel 18 20 to 32 the soul who sins shall die the son shall not bear the guilt of the father nor the father bear the guilt of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. That's explaining somebody like me. I was a wicked man. I was living in sin. I turned to God and I started following all his statutes. I started listening to him. I started living a holy and righteous life. So God's sitting there saying, okay, he's now surely going to live. Okay, uh, let me see where I left off here. He goes, oh, he went on. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done. He shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his sin, his ways and live? 
when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be redeemed because the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die. Okay, I'm going to stop there a minute because now listen to what he's saying. He's saying if you are a righteous man, with saying you're living a holy life and everything else, but now all of a sudden you turn away and you start committing sin, he's saying you're going to die. So take these once saved people. You know, they're trying to tell you that, oh, once I believe, I can't lose my salvation. Well, they're saying that God's a liar. There's his word right there, okay? Now remember, a lot of these lunatics think that, you know, a lot of the things from the old covenant no longer apply. Okay, yeah, there's definitely things that no longer apply from the Old Covenant, but there are many things that still apply from the Old Covenant. They just don't understand it. See, to them, they don't want to do anything. That's why they're saying, oh, you're trying, it's a, it's a work salvation. You're trying to earn your way into heaven. No, I'm, I'm making the changes and the sacrifices that God commanded us all to do. You're not going to find any of these people, and especially these ignorant kids on the internet doing these kind of things because they're all lazy. They're looking for an easy way out. That, that, that's, that's all it does. Now, as far as, okay, take somebody like me where I'm concerned. I now reach the place where I'm sanctified, okay? That is what God is telling you in Scripture. You need to go and allow him to purify you, to change you, to allow you to become a sanctified disciple of Jesus Christ. If you do, you are never going to sin ever again. Why? Because Jesus is guiding you in your life. Now, like some of the people in my, uh, that you've met that are in my videos, they all went looking for God with all their heart. He then led them to me. I point them in the right direction. They're now leading their lives talking to God. They're learning how to be sanctified. They are not there yet. Right now, there's two people on this earth that are sanctified. That's it. Okay, there will be more if they do what they ask. As of right now, this is it. There's all that exists right this minute. That's why, you know, this is another thing this guy has like said. He's sitting here saying he's the only one that knows the truth. Yeah, right now, as God related, I am the only one on this earth that, that he has appointed to relate his truth. Don't believe me? Then, as I said over and over, go look and compare the message I'm relating to anybody else out there look all you want guess what you're not going to find anybody because nobody is living the life that i'm a living nobody's experiencing the things that i'm experiencing i'm seeing blessings every day from the lord i have complete peace in my life i don't have to worry about sicknesses disabilities tragedy or anything like that that all you people do i'm going to live a very long life a very long and healthy life without any doctors, any pills, anything like that. And that is why I'm relating these things in my video. Why I tell you my age, why I tell you where I am. I got nothing to hide. Do you know there's actually people that have done background checks on me because they're trying to figure, they're like, man, what's with this guy? How? And I'm like, look all you want. Guess what? You know, some people are saying, it's got to be a scam daughter. So there's got to be something. Guess what? You can search all you want. You're not going to find. I can back up everything I related in my videos and everything else. You know, I haven't seen a doctor now. It's probably been, uh, I'm trying to remember, it would have probably been January of 2013. That would have probably been it. So I don't need them. I'm done. As I say, I've learned the truth. I'm living in the truth. God's, you know, my wife, my kids, none of them. None of us use doctors or anything like that because we don't need them because we got God in our life. God's protecting us. We possess the Holy Spirit. That's the problem with most of you. You don't possess the Holy Spirit. Let me pick back up on this scripture now. So uh, here he says, yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a wicked man turns from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he has committed, he, has sure, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel! Is it not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not? 
Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that Ikorina will not be your ruin. Cast away from all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. So he's telling you right now that if you don't learn how to turn from sin and start living a holy, righteous life, that you're going to die. Now, this idiot, this no-nonsense Christian is telling you, oh, you don't have to do any of these things. All we have to do is say we believe in Jesus and we're saved. Oh, I'm saved for all eternity now because I, I know I turn to God, you know. Look at the guy. You can tell he's just a lazy know-it-all. He has no idea what the heck is what. He's a minister of the devil. He's condemned for all eternity. And he's filling people's head with nonsense. So are these other characters out there that are relating all this saved by grace, you know, uh, nonsense out there. And I'm going to get into that saved by grace stuff a little further as we go on. But I now want to get into some other things that God, these are things that Jesus commanded of us, but yet nobody's doing it. They're, you know, they're, they're sitting there saying, oh, God's not expecting me to do these things. Really? Well, let, let, let's see what the word of God actually says about, you know, giving up your life in this world, forsaking everything and following him. This is Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me, follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16, 24, 25. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Forever desires to save his life will lose it, but ever loses his life for my sake will find it. Luke 14, 26, 33. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Least after he has laid the foundation is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still great away, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So how many of you have actually done those things? How many of you have walked away from mother, father, brother, sister? How many of you have forsaken everything in your life? Guess what? If you haven't done it, you don't know God. You don't know Jesus. You're living a lie. You have no idea what the word of God is relating, and you're trying to find an easy way out. That is where some of my brothers and sisters are actually struggling right now. That's what God has had me relating to them, you know, in our group. We're actually, we'll be getting together, you know, within a, two weeks. And uh, a couple of them are going to be giving you their testimony as to what has happened in their own life and everything else. So, but uh, they're, you know, they're finding it hard because yeah, they've got family members coming against them. And uh, they're learning things, for example, like, you know, uh, like, okay, take my wife, for example, her mother got cancer and everything else, you know. So, of course, Linda's trying to tell her mother the truth that, look, you don't understand what Jesus did for you. You need no doctors, you need no pills. Her mother, on the other hand, of course, is sitting there going, oh, Linda, you know, I'm, you know, I got, how does she put it? She's like, I can't listen to your nonsense. I got people praying for me. So Linda's telling her the truth, but yet she thinks that she's got people praying for her. She, she as I said, she didn't realize that doctors and nurses are working for the devil. 
So that is why someone like my wife or any of my other brothers and sisters, you're never going to see us at a hospital. You're never going to see us go with a relative to a hospital or anything like that because we'd be a hypocrite. We'd be living a lie. Why would we go to the den of the devil? We're living in the truth. We need no doctors or pills. So why would I go to a hospital? Why would I go and try to invite the devil into my life? You know, this world is trying to tell you that doctors and nurses work for God. No, they don't. They work for the devil. They don't know the truth. And anybody is to say, you know, again, read Deuteronomy 28. If you're disobeying God, that's why sickness is going to come into your life, because you're living in sin. You know, it has nothing to do like a lot of these false preachers are saying, oh, it's because we live in a falling world. There's no scripture that relates that nonsense. There's no scriptures at all that relate that stuff. So these guys, as I say, like this no-nonsense Christian nutcase, you know, listen to them. Over and over, they're telling you, oh, it's impossible for us to stop sinning, okay? So I'm, I'm going to read you some scriptures as, as far as that's concerned now. So, uh, well, before I do that, I'm, I'm at this part. Yeah, they, now think about this. They're telling you that they can't stop sinning, but yet they're going to be saved, okay? I want to read you a couple scriptures now that's showing you how that's all a lie, okay? That they're sitting there saying, oh, I can, I can continue in sin, but I'm still going to be saved because I believe in Jesus Christ. So 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inher inherit the kingdom of God. Now remember, like uh, 1, 1 John 1, 9 was talking about, you know, he needs to cleanse you of your all your unrighteousness, okay, of your sins. So this guy's telling you that he's still a sinner. It's impossible for him to stop sinning. Well, right there, it's telling you he's unrighteous then, which means there's no way he's going to enter the kingdom of God. Okay, uh, Revelation 21, 7 to 8. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay. He who overcomes. What are you overcoming? You're overcoming sin. But of course, that uh, no-nonsense guy would probably tell you something different than it means something different because he's looking for an easy way out. 1 Peter 4, 17 to 18. For it is a time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So think about it. Peter's telling you it's hard for a righteous person to be saved. So if it's hard for a righteous person to be saved, what do you think is going to happen to the people who are ungodly and who are still sinners? They're going to go to hell. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. So here's this idiot guy and all these other people out there and saying, oh man, I can't stop sinning. We're never, it's impossible for us to stop sinning. Yeah, it's impossible for you to stop sinning because you don't possess the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. You, 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 the only spirit you possess in your life is the devil. That's why you can't stop sinning and that's why you're going to be condemned for all eternity. So where are we now? Let's see. Uh, okay, so again, these Guys are saying they can't stop sinning, you know, that it's impossible to stop sinning, you know. So I'm going to read you these scriptures. 1 John 3, 4 to 9. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take our way of sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. So right there, so this David Houghton guy's telling you he still sins, okay? Guess what? The scripture's telling he doesn't know God, doesn't know in the least. So why are you people even listening to him? As he says here, whoever abides in him does not sin. That's somebody like me. I no longer sin. I know God. I abide in God. I possess his Holy Spirit. 
Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practice righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So I'm practicing righteousness. I'm living a holy and righteous life. I'm doing what God is asking me to do. So in his eyes, now I'm righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. So the David Houghton guy, he's telling you he can't stop sinning. He's of the devil, plain and simple. Wake up, people. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. His seed remains in him, who? Jesus Christ dwells inside of me. I can't sin because I'm born of God, because Jesus dwells in me. He's guiding me. He will not lead me into sin. It will not happen. I am now born of God. So if you're one of these people out there saying, oh, I'm a born again Christian and you still got sin, you still got sickness in your life, guess what? You're not a Christian and you're not born again. You have no idea what you're even talking about. 1 John 2, 3 to 6. And by this we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments, whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Whatever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God has perfected us. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. There you go. If you're not living your life exactly like Christ, then you don't know God. You're a liar. You're living in sin. You have no idea what you're talking about. And, you know, a lot of these people will come to me and, you know, they'll say, man, you're mean, you're nasty, you're saying all these things, you call people children of the devil and everything else. Well, as my brothers and sisters will tell you, I don't mince words. I speak truth. And I'm not afraid to come right out and tell it exactly like it is. And, you know, my one brother comes up to me a lot of times and says, man, you go right for the heart. You just go and, you know, and it's like, yeah, I, because I'm, I'm not going to fool around with somebody that's trying to spread lies and things like that and everything else and so forth. So, yeah, I'm going to come right out and tell you that it's David Houghton character. He's nothing but, yeah, he's a moron. He's a child of the devil. He's a condemned minister of the devil that's going to perish for all eternity. He is evil. He is wicked. And he is leading people astray. So, and guess what? I'm not sinning by speaking the truth. So I'm going to get into more things and, you know, things he said about me and suppose just how clueless this guy is in just a little bit. But uh, I'm going to continue. 1 John 1, 8 to 10. This is the one that the children of the devil love to twist to, to say, oh, it's impossible for us to stop sinning. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So I sinned. I admit I was a sinner. I then turned to God. I then said, Lord, cleanse me of my sins. I want to live your holy and righteous life. I'm admitting that I was a sinner. Nowhere is that scripture saying whatsoever that we can't stop sinning, that we're always going to sin. But that's what the children of the devil want you to believe because they're looking for an easy way out. They don't want to have to make the changes and sacrifices that I read to you in the scriptures that God is asking us all to make. So, 1 John 5.18, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. That is me. I'm now born of God. The devil can't touch me anymore because God's now keeping me safe. That's why I don't worry about sickness, disease, or anything like that, because I got God protecting me. I did what God instructed me to do. The problem that you people all have sickness and that in your life is because you don't know God. You didn't do what he asked you to do. So John 5, 13 to 14, but the one who was healed did not know who it was for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in a temple and said to him, see, you have been made well, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So right there, Jesus is telling the man, he's like, look, stop sinning. Don't sin anymore. If you sin, some other sickness is going to come back into your life. You're going to be worse off than you were before. 
He's telling you flat out that it's your sin that is bringing the sickness into your life. So if you have any kind of sickness, disabilities, or whatever, it's because you don't know God and you're living in sin. You're living a lie. You're listening to delusional nutcases like this David Houghton character. Matthew 5.48, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mark 9.23, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So think about it. This guy's telling you that it's impossible to stop sinning. Jesus has said all things are possible to the one who believes. So he's basically calling Jesus a liar. See, I believed it was possible to overcome my sin. David Houghton, on the other hand, doesn't believe it's possible. He just proves he doesn't know God. He doesn't know the Word of God. He's a liar. He has no idea what the Word of God is relating. Jesus said, look, we got to be perfect, just as his Father in heaven is perfect. But they don't, you know, they, they don't want you, you know, they, they don't understand that. And they, they, as I said, they're all looking for an easy way out. That's all they're doing. They don't want to make the changes that God requires. Believe me, you know, as the scripture relates, there's very few people that are going to be saved. Why? As the scripture says, you know, the road to life is hard and difficult. Only few find it. Well, believe me, I see firsthand just how few are going to be saved. Because many of you, you're, you're following these false preachers at these churches, you're following these false religions, you're following these nutcases on YouTube and everything else in that regard. You're listening to all the nonsense that these people are filling your heads with. You know, and as I said, on internet, it's, it's kids galore out there, and they're all looking for just an easy way because they're lazy. They don't want to make the changes, they don't want to make the sacrifice that God's going to ask of them. So when they hear something that's simple, they're jumping all over it because to them, oh man, that's an easy path to take. I'll take that path over having to give up my life in this world. I want to continue, you know, living in sin. That's how a lot of these people are looking at it. And that is why they will perish for all eternity. So uh, let's now, I want to get into... Uh, you know, some of the comments he made about me in, in the one video and so forth that I was watching. So, uh, of course, he's trying to say that I'm wrong in regards to testing the spirits and achieving sanctification. And he goes on to say that I'm, you know, that I'm the only one that's preaching truth. Well, guess what? That is correct. I'm telling you right now. Uh, when God had asked me to do these things, did I know that much? No. I asked him. I was like, who else is out there? I went looking for And he told me, he's like, right now, you're it. You're the only person out there. And believe me, that was a hard pill for me to swallow at the time. But I can tell you right now, I understand. And to say, search all you want. You're not gonna find anybody relating the message that I'm relating. It's not out there. You, you can look all you want. You are not gonna find it. It's just not there. Uh, you know, listen to what I'm relating and then listen to what other people are relating. As I said, I'm not asking you to follow me. I don't ask anybody to follow me or subscribe to me. In fact, I'm constantly yelling at some of my brothers and sisters, telling them, hey, look, you're trying to use me as a crutch. I'm not God. You need to go directly to God. You need to learn from him yourself. You know, a lot of people are looking to, I guess you could say, have what I have in my life, but they don't want to make the effort and the changes that need to be made in order, you know, they, they don't want to do the sacrifices that I had to do. You know, I listed all the things that, that I had to do in order to get here. I had to give up, you know, my job, my company, you know, family, friends, my wealth. I gave away, you know, boats, cars, homes. You know, I did all these things. I, you know, I, I did whatever God asked me to do. I did his desire and not mine. It's not my desire to do these videos or whatever. It's God's desire. I do this because he instructs me to do it. I do what he asked me to do. Well, that's a lot of your problems. You don't want to make those sacrifices. You don't want to have to give up. Yeah, you know, my wife, she had to walk away, for example, from her parents. They wouldn't accept the truth. They wouldn't get it. They, they just, and God just finally said, look, just walk away from them. Give it, you know. They want to believe and continue in the lies. Let them continue in the lies. It got to the place to where her own parents, her own father, and that cut her out of her, his will. That's how bitter and everything they become. You know, it, it just because they don't understand. Linda, you know, now, I can tell you right now, now they're regretting all their moves because now they realize what Linda was trying to do for them. And uh, as I say, it's all too late. 
they, as you say, they condemn their souls for all eternity. They will now suffer for all eternity. My brothers and sisters will suffer for all eternity. Her brothers and you know, and you know, their wives and things like that will suffer for all eternity. They wouldn't listen to the truth. They wouldn't believe the truth. There's only one truth. And as I say, if you're following God, think about this. If you're following God, you know, in heaven, there's no sickness or anything. So why do you, do you honestly think that God wants you to be sick in this lifetime? Does he, do you honestly think he wants to be sick? A God who loves you, do you honestly think he wants you to suffer? You know, how you suffer is by having a deal with, okay, just like me, for example, dealing with like idiots like this uh, David Houghton character and all the unbelievers and everything else that are out there who are not willing to accept and live in the truth. That's how you suffer for God, for having to put up with all the wicked people in this world. I mean, that, that, that's the problem in it. So um, here again, he said, he made this statement. He said, it's not like Mike Rakowski stumbled across another sanctified disciple who overcame sin and sickness. And as I told you earlier, yeah, I did. I actually, I went to God. I prayed all my heart, you know, God, you got to lead me to the truth. He ended up leading me to a Smith Wigglesworth devotional where I started reading some things that I'll never forget when I started reading that book. I, t I told my wife, this was like in August, this would have been about August of 2013. I was like, wow, this book's kind of amazing. It seems like the stuff that's happening in my life, this book's explaining it the very next day. Well, it got to the point that when I reached in November, that's when I learned how to test the spirits. That's how I learned to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. That's when things really started changing in my life because now I was learning how to hear from God. Uh, then he goes, well, he can't be right because if you listen to him and then you listen to his, he calls them my, he calls my brothers and sisters in Christ his his cult, his followers, his cult members, that type of thing, right? He says they all say the same stuff. Look, they're saying things like relate or testify and stuff like that. And then he goes and says, look at what the old prophets they used to say, thus saith the Lord. So I guess I should be sitting here saying thus. You know, whenever God's asking me to relate something, I should be sitting here saying, Thus saith the Lord, instead of, Hey, Jesus, ask me to relate this. This is how stupid this guy is, you know, and how ridiculous his thinking and reasoning and everything is. I mean, the guy is like a total... So, and as I said, he goes on, he's basically saying that my brothers and sisters in Christ are all brainwashed, you know, that they're... Uh, listening to me well you'll you'll hear from them again in the next video and the other videos that they're not following me they're as i say if any any i i just told you it's like if any of them are starting getting to the point to where they're like you know constantly coming to me and this and that and everything else i'm starting to you know god's shown me how i need to get more forceful with some of them and that's what i've been doing here late like, because you know i'm sitting here going look i'm not god Stop coming to me with, you know, asking me questions left and right. You know, my job is just to point you right in the right direction so that you now know how to talk to God. Well, you have to realize overcoming sin is not an easy thing to do. It, it's, you know, going through God's purification process in order to be sanctified is a hard thing because you, you're going to take the devil head on. And it is very, very hard. And the devil's going to use everything in your life to try to stop you he's going to use family members that don't believe he's he if, if you've got possessions things like that he's going he's going to uh use that against you because god's going to have you forsaken you got to realize god shows no partiality what occurs for one and he's made it quite clear to me all the things that i had to do all my other brothers and sisters are going to have to do the same so the more possessions you have, the harder it is. That's why Jesus said, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The more things you've accumulated in this life, if you now want to go to God, you're going to have a very hard time uh, that happening because you're going to have to learn how to walk away from everything in this life. As he said, if you try to save your life in this world, you're going to lose it. You got to give up your life in this world in order to save it. He meant what he said. So if you, if you haven't given up your life, you don't know God. You don't know the first thing about God. You're living a lie. You are living a lie, and you will perish. No ends of your buts about it. So then let's see. Um, then he goes on about how I talked about the Bible, you know, that there's mistakes in the Bible and everything else. So 
first off, let's talk about the Bible a little bit. You have to realize there's like over 2,000 Bibles out there. And they all have different words, different meanings, different translations. If you read these things, you're going to see that none of them are... You could read a certain thing and it could mean something completely different than what another Bible version's actually said. Now, if we're all supposed to go directly to God, as he said, I think it's in John 6, 45, where he says they will all be taught by God, okay? Why, think about this. Look into how these Bibles, who are the people that actually, you know, created these Bibles, organized these Bibles, put them together. They were all like various different church leaders and stuff like that. Well, guess what? If, if, you're, if you are part of any church, religion, or anything like that, that proves you don't know God. That proves that you don't possess his Holy Spirit. So where all of you are thinking that the Bible is a holy book and everything else, it is not. That Bible has a lot of lies in it. There's a lot of books in there that you shouldn't even be reading. One of the things he took, he, he took one of my videos or, or one of my writings where, I, where God had related about, you know, six of the epistles that weren't written by Paul, right? Well, he sits there and he goes, well, if you actually do your work, you'll find that some scholars agree with that and other scholars disagree with it. No kidding, Sherlock. You know, I never said anything like that. I, I know that for a fact. It's just like anything else in this world. You're going to find that people say this, certain people say this, certain people say that. But guess what? There's only one truth. There's only one person that actually knows the truth, and that's God. And guess what? Paul didn't write those books. Then he goes on to say, well, you never hear him. Paul, you know, like where I think he said something about Hebrews. Uh, he's saying that, you know, well, you don't hear him talking about that, yet he reads that. Yeah, because God told me it was a good book to read. No, it wasn't written by Paul. Paul Hebrews was written by an unknown author. None of us know him. I asked God, I was like, was it any of the people that, are, the, uh, that wrote any part of the New Testament? God said no. So it's no one. I, I have no idea who it is. I don't know the question to ask in order to find out who it was that wrote Hebrews. But I can tell you this much, it wasn't Paul. But it, it is a good book to read. It is, a, you know, God is okay with reading that. There's things, as I said, there's a lot of things in these books that really they're just filling your head with nonsense. Like the stuff in Ephesians, like these, where these, you know, once saved, they use that one scripture, you know, uh, I think it's Ephesians 2, or, yeah, I think it's Ephesians 2, uh, uh, 8, where it's, uh, oh, here it is, yeah, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not as works, lest anyone should boast. Well, these guys have twisted that scripture around to mean a whole different thing than what it's actually relating, and I'll get into that a little further down. Uh, he then made a comment. He goes, whenever someone brings up someone with sickness in scripture, he's always bringing up old covenant scriptures. And I say nothing about those who were sick in the New Testament scriptures. Okay, in many of my videos, I talk about this, you know, about the New Testament people where people are saying, well, this one was sick, that one was sick. I'm not going to get into big detail here because that'll be going on forever. What I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to post one of my writings in the comments section to show this moron how I do uh, uh, point those people out and what people don't understand about those scriptures and everything else and so forth. And the reason that a lot of times that I use a lot of the Old Covenant scriptures, moron, is because they still apply today. So uh, that's what this idiot doesn't understand. So, uh, as I said, to him, he thinks, oh, well, they no longer apply that type of thing. So, uh, uh, this is how they put, and they believe that any Christian who follows all covenant commands is not accepting what Jesus did for them on the cross since they are following the law. So, again, see, they think that if you follow any old commands then you're ignoring what jesus did for for you on the cross so see in their mindset we, we don't have to do any they, you know that you know they, they don't apply anymore because all they got to do is say i believe in jesus and i want to read something that just shows just how clueless these people are this is in matthew 5 17 to 20 do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, 
not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of God. So right there, see, he's teaching people that, well, they don't apply anymore. Well, guess what? That's what God said. You're, he's nobody. He's a goner because he thinks they don't apply. There are certain ones that still apply. There are others that do not apply. For example, for, you know, like, let's say, like the uh, sacrifices of animals no longer apply because Jesus is now the atonement for our sins. But take, for example, like the Ten Commandments and everything else. They still apply. That doesn't mean that you're allowed to now go murder, you can steal or whatever. See, and that's how some of these morons even think. They think that repent, to them repent means that, well, I can steal or I can lie. And then afterwards, all I got to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry, you know, forgive me. And then, you know, I'm okay. You know, so their logic, repent means that they can just keep doing whatever sin they want to do. And then they can just keep saying, Lord, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Repent means that you're going to turn from sin entirely. You're no longer going to sin. So this is what a lot of people, they're listening to nonsense. Their, their head is being filled with tons of lies and everything else. Now, this is, this is another comical one. Then he goes to say, you know, because I say I no longer sin, he's going to put me to the test. And he uses my wife as an example. He says, look at his wife. She's got short hair and she's wearing a crucifix. This is how stupid this guy actually is. So he goes, he uses the, the 1 Corinthians 11 scripture. And he's trying to say that that scripture saying that all women must have long hair. You know, he, he's like, see, Mike Rakowski's sinning because he doesn't have his wife in submission. This guy is a total idiot. Okay, where did God ever in scripture say that it's a sin for a woman to have short hair? What the idiot doesn't understand about that 1 Corinthians 11 scripture is like it's talking about head coverings and everything else and, and a woman submitting to her husband and that type of thing. What you'll find if you know how to talk to Jesus, okay, you know like, okay, uh, how this world uh, symbolizes that a couple are married, they normally do it with rings, okay? Do you, do you know any kind of scripture where God ever told you to do that? No, it's not. What you're going to find when you go to God, how God, what a God is expecting of a woman is she is to wear a head covering. If she's married, if she's out, let's say, out and about in the world, God then is expecting her to wear a head covering to let other people know that she is someone who is married and of uh, you know she's taken she's off the table that she's in submission she's under authority to her husband that is what god i don't know this and i didn't know this until talk to jesus is the one of course that points these things out this is why if you don't know how to talk to god you're never going to learn truth you're never going to understand what the real truth is but that's now for example like if my wife is out with me and we're out and about together my wife doesn't have to wear a head covering it only applies when my wife is separated from me and she's out around other where let's say she went to the grocery store alone and there's going to be men in the grocery store she has to wear a head covering now if she's going to a place where there's strictly women around she doesn't have to god doesn't require it of her i didn't make these laws god did you would know this if you knew how to talk to him but that's the problem most of you don't know how to talk to him so you're just you're going by and listening to the nonsense that other people like this David Houghton character is telling you that, oh man, you know, if a woman has short hair, then she's sinning. So, yeah, I'm saying, you're listening to the nonsense of fools. So, then he goes on and he talks about, you know, he says that he has a picture of me where I said there's no scripture verse out there that ever uses the term saved by grace those three words in that exact order there is no scripture out there whatsoever then he like 
pulls a clip from this Jack Sack Smack 77 nut case who's sitting out there going, hey, stupid, yes, there is there too. No, Jack Smack 77, there's not stupid. There is no scripture. You may think there's two, but there is no scripture out there whatsoever that uses those words saved by grace. Again, listen to what Ephesians 2, 8, and I think the other one he's using is probably in Romans 11 or whatever. But uh, if you read 2, 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Okay? doesn't say you're saved by grace. What that's saying, it's by God's grace that he is allowing you to be saved through your faith. So you're not saved by grace. His grace alone is not what's going to save you. You have to now make the changes that he's asking you to make. So then he's like, I'm going to now show you how he's, he's not even, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing what he's saying and everything else. And he starts saying, look, he said, accept Jesus into your life. He's like, where's the scripture that says that? This is how ridiculous this guy is going, okay? I mean, okay, are you not supposed to accept Jesus into your life? If you want to gain salvation, are you not supposed to accept Jesus into your life? That's how idiotic this guy is. You know, then, uh, you know, he goes, of course, with the repent of your sins again. Look, he said repent of your sins. Yeah, the reason I say, I, I could just say repent. But the reason I say repent of your sins is because there's morons like yourself that don't understand that when God's saying repent, that you have to repent of your sins. So this is, as I say, this guy is a, a complete loser, to put it in plain and simple words. He, he thinks he's a know-it-all, but he's actually, as I say, he's nothing but just basically a lazy bump that's all he truly is he's trying to pretend that he's no scripture when he doesn't have the slightest idea what the word of god is relating he is nothing but a condemned liar don't listen to this fool people because he is he's a fool he's a nutcase so of course you know then he uh talks about me overcoming you know he's sitting there saying he's overcome sin and sickness yeah i have Yes, I have. I don't have to worry. I don't spend a penny on doctors or anything and so forth. And if you listen, as I say, to my brothers and sisters in the videos, you'll see that they're doing the same thing. What you've got to understand is this, and I, I want to read something because, uh, let me find that scripture verse because, uh, we, when we turn to God, and we accept his spirit into our life he is now going to ask things of us in order to change us in order to transform us as he said he's going to change our hearts he's going to make us into a holy and righteous child well our flesh is going to fight that because here's what happens a lot of people want to stay in this world they don't want to make the sacrifices that god's asking them to make I have seen many people fall away because they get so far, but then when things get difficult, they quit, they give up. Or when God is asking them to do certain things, they don't want to do it because they'd rather push their desires over God's. On my journey, I have seen this happen time and time and time again okay a prime example is a judas okay he went so far he could do all these things with god but he never reached the place where he was sanctified read john 17 as jesus saying sanctify them in truth that's what you have to reach you have to achieve sanctification this guy david he has he has no idea what that's all about you got to realize this guy He's, he's just a loser. He has no idea what the word of God is relating. He's never going to be able to comprehend it because he doesn't possess the Holy Spirit. So he's just filling your head with nonsense, with lies and everything else. What happens, and this is the power of the sower. This is the explanation of it. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Least they should believe and be saved. 
but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. I'm bearing fruit in my life. It's not, you know, some people think that bearing fruit means leading others to Jesus. No, it's not. It means living in the blessings of God, experiencing the wonders and the blessings of God in your life. I'm experiencing some pretty amazing things. It's like I related. God won't let me have a job because I'm working for him. So, you know, like when I, I told I'll use my house again, for example, I had all these repairs in my house, you know, that needed to be done. I didn't have the money to do them. God had me give all my money away. I'm like, Lord, how's this going to get done? He's like, I'll take care of it for you. As I said, listen to my videos. You're never hear me. I'll never ask for donations. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Anybody that's asking you to donate any kind of money, run from them. They're not a God. They don't know anything of God. If you know God, why would you have to ask for donations? I just go to God. I'm like, okay, Lord, what's happening here? What do you want me to do? How do I, how's this going to be done? He's like, I'm going to be taking care of it. Well, guess what? He did. He had ended up, had somebody ended up sending me, you know, one of my brothers, like over $300,000. So, God, all got taken care of. So that's what you people are missing. I'm experiencing some amazing things in my life that you could also be an experience in yours, but you're listening to nutcases, lunatics, like this David Houghton character that has no idea what the Word of God is relating. This guy is a condemned soul. He's, as I say, there's not a chance he'll ever be saved. Any of these once saved, you know, saved by grace guys, run from them. They're, they're going to lead you straight to the devil, not to God. They're just looking for an easy path to travel. That's all. As I say, overcoming sin is hard. It is not an easy thing to do. And that's what this parable is relating about. This is what happens is that when the devil starts, God allows the devil to take shots at you. So in a period of temptation, when things get hard, people give up because it gets too difficult. Or others are trying to hold on to their old life. As God said, you're trying to save your life in this world, you're going to lose it. Well, that's what happens. Either family members, wealth, or things like that, people want to hang on to. Or if God asks them to do something that they're uncomfortable doing, they give up. They just don't want to follow. When we do our video, if you actually take notice in everything else, you're going to find that some people were in some of my previous videos aren't here anymore because they found it too hard. They, they chose a different path. They went a different way. And they're going to regret. They're going to have a lot of regret. I can tell you that right now. But they're not living the truth. They don't understand the truth. They don't want to follow because it gets hard. It gets difficult. Learning, being sanctified is not an easy thing to accomplish. That's why God's saying it's super rare. You know, it, it's, the road is difficult. But that is what God is expecting. If you want to live the holy and righteous life that God is commanding you to live, you are going to have to learn how to become sanctified. And it's not an easy thing. Once you become sanctified, you are now a born-again Christian. You now can no longer sin. Now is the time when there is not a chance that you will lose your salvation because you are now a child of God. That is what he means now those who truly believe will not be snatched out of my hands. You, you could say you believe, but yeah, you, you've allowed the devil to take you away because you don't, you don't know the truth. You're living a lie. You don't understand what he's trying to relate to you. You have no idea what it means to be born again. That's another thing. You know, the terms, for example, believer, Christian, disciple, apostle, many of you, you don't even know that they all have different meanings. You can be a believer, but, you know, not be a disciple. You know, you can be a believer, but not be a Christian. You know, you can be a, a, a you know, like, for example, like some people like have said, you know, like, you, like, like, a, like I'm apostle. I'm not an apostle. I'm a disciple. I'm not an apostle. You know, so you just don't understand what those words are relating. So can a believer get sick? Yes, a believer can get sick. That's what he's trying to tell you. That's what's happening in some of the New Testament scriptures. You know, you got to realize that just because you're a believer doesn't mean that you know, you still can't get sick. You can get sick. It's you've got to 
grow in the truth and understand the truth in order to over, overcome those afflictions in your life. You got to learn how to stop sinning. And that's the problem. Certain people will go so far, but then they didn't go all the way. And that's what, like he's describing, like where Judas and so forth was concerned. And that's why a Judas or so, you know, fell away. Anyway, I think I pretty much covered everything about this character. Uh, look, this guy, he's a nobody. He has no idea what he's talking about. He's a fool. He's an idiot. He's just, as I said, he's, he's like this. He, he just runs. He just loves to hear himself talk. He calls me a narcissist, and I mean, this guy is the biggest narcissist of them all. I mean, he and you know, he says I'm full of pride and everything else. No, I'm I'm actually bold and confident in my relationship with God. I know without a doubt that what I'm believing is correct. I'm experiencing the blessings in my life. I no longer sin. I no longer have to worry about sickness, tragedies, or anything like that because I got God protecting me. I know for a fact he can't say those kind of things. He's just a sinner. He's got sickness in his life and everything else. He's a child of the devil. He doesn't know God. He doesn't have God's protection. He, he has the slice idea who God is. He's just filling your head, people, with lies. So, again, if you're going to do something to try to say that what I'm relating is wrong, God's going to have me come at you, and he's going to have me expose just how clueless, how wicked, how ignorant, how condemned you are. And this is advice to any of you. Go ahead, try it. I'm going to point out some other. There's this other character out there. His name is called Yes, I'm a Christian. And he's another one. He just did a video out there saying that I'm a false prophet. I'm not going to waste much time on this. If you look at him, he's another lazy kid, overweight kid. And another one that, you know, if you look at one of his videos, his video was called, Is Repenting of Sins Part of How One Is Saved? And it's around the 240 mark, he makes this comment, because no one is going to go to stop sinning. No one is going to completely stop sinning even after becoming a Christian. That is the most, the biggest lie that anybody can make. That guy condemned his soul. He's spreading lies. He allowed the devil to turn him into a false preacher. And now he's out there spreading his nonsense, telling people, oh, it's impossible to stop sinning. See, that's what's happening. All these kids, you know, they'll hear my testimony and because they're looking for something easier, they'll sit there and say, oh, we can't stop sinning. There's no way. So that's it. And I just read you all the scriptures that prove what God is asking of you, that you have to live a holy and righteous life, that you have to learn how to overcome sin, that you have to repent of your sins, moron. So anyway, I'm done. I, I think I've done enough to show you that this guy is, is just a total loser. So uh, people, you could be living a, 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 an amazing life in this world, you know, to where you don't have sickness in your life, to where you need no doctors, you need no pills. You know, a woman recently wrote to me, you know, saying uh, that she's got like a six-year-old son with a disability and everything else. Uh, she's supposedly like, you know, she's like, you know, I've been searching for the truth and she's like, you know, I'm finding it and everything else. I, I tried to tell her, I'm like, look, you know, if you want to talk, contact me. She's still like, you know, if, if you don't understand what I'm relating is the truth, then even if you slightly think that what I'm relating is the truth, then you'd better contact me so that I can point you in the right direction. Because if you don't, what's going to happen, you're going to allow the devil to fill your head with some type of nonsense, somebody that you may know, a relative or whatever, is going to sit there and say to you, hey, don't listen to that guy. Those things, that's impossible. That can't really be. And they're going to get you to doubt it and to give up and to walk away. And, that, and that's what happened. That's why very, 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 very few people are going to make it. Because you're allowing others, instead of believing and acting on the truth, you're allowing the people in your lives to convince you to believe otherwise. And that's why you're, you're just going to miss out. And you're never going to see those blessings in your life. Anyway, I've done what the Lord has done.
this no nonsense guy, that guy, everything he relates is pure nonsense. He's a loser. He has no idea. He's a minister of the devil. He's condemned for all eternity. There is no chance that guy's ever going to be saved. So don't listen to him. Don't waste your time on him. And, uh, you know, he's a goner. So as I said, I told you, I'd be coming out with guns a-blazing and exposing you for the idiot that you are. So praise the Lord. Take care. And I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye.